it's your man James, Mr. Point of Treasures, back again with some more video action for you. Today we're taking a stroll down everyone's favorite uh, favorite lane here of memory lane, which we can go back into the annals of comic book history and check out something from the past that uh, you know I think you guys would like to be a little bit interested in. It's why it's great. And for those of you who are new to the program here, what we do is uh, I take an issue of the past from my personal collection that I think is pretty awesome. I'll tell you why I think it's so cool and why you yourself should want to check it out for yourself. So I hope you'll, I hope you'll enjoy joining me today on this little venture as uh, we always do. And uh, first of all, I want to thank you all for joining me today. And uh, just let you know that if you like what you see here, if you like what you see uh, me talking about here, make sure to drop a like there, help out the algorithms of the uh, channel here. It's always appreciated. Also, if you got any comments after it's over, please drop them down there below and let me hear what you got to say. I always want to hear what the folks think because, uh, you know, it's important to me to know what you guys are thinking as well. So I like to hear what you guys uh, have to tell me. So I always enjoy the comments. And uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. I've been doing a whole lot of content uh, recently, and I want to try to keep that uh, going. So please uh, help out the channel by helping it to grow and uh, get some more subscribers up there. And, uh, you know, if, if you've already subscribed, please share out some links so other people can come over here and join us and uh, get in on the fun, right? So there you go. And uh, so that uh, with the shill out of the way there, let's uh, move right on into it. Today we're heading back to 19, 1985. And we're going to be checking out Avengers 262. So let's uh, get things ready here for that. So first of all, we get rid of me. And then we bring up the issue. And there we are. So yeah, here it is, Avengers 262, uh, you know, when Titans tussle, Hercules versus the Submariner. Now, this is a classic cover, you know, just classic John Buscema and uh, Tom Palmer. I mean, this is like during the heart of their, uh, their run together there in the 80s. I mean, these guys are just like synonymous with the book. Uh, just a great image, you know. You see, you see that the classic battle of two heroes with others in the background, including the uh, the often overlooked Stingray, who uh, will play a part in this story as well. And uh, it's kind of an interesting issue because the cover, you do get this in the issue, but not quite the way you think. And it's also the issue kind of focuses a little more on the uh, the personal side, shall we say, of of the team rather than like on a big time adventure. And I think issues like this are always fun when you get a little downtime, say in between big events or big storylines or whatever, and you have these little one off issues like this. It's just got like a little a little character building time. And that's what this issue definitely is. It's some character building stuff. And so we're going to get right on into it here. This of course is a great issue by uh, Roger Stern and uh, John Buscema. So let's get on right into the next image here. And you can see we start off our uh, issue uh, Again, like I said, I always want to start off with some kind of action. That's usually usually how you want to start a story off in superhero fiction. And, you know, can't ask much more than, you know, Stingray, you know, uh, emerging from out of the water. You can see here just, just a beautiful shot. You know, just the figure work of John Buscema. You know, he's one of the finest, uh, you know, figure work drawers of comic history as far as I'm concerned. I mean, it's, it's you know, everybody... Everybody who's anybody who wants to do anything decent with superhero work, uh, you know, John Buscema is hard to go wrong. But uh, here you are. He's out there in the Atlantic. He was doing some undersea stuff, and he's coming out. You know, here with the funny, funny pirate talk, you know, ahoy, this ship. Ahoy, the ship. This is Stingray. Prepare to be boarded. So it's like, you know. But then we see it's all just some funny games he's having with his woman, you know. She's even laughing at it, you know, I, 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 sir, shiver me timbers and yo, ho, ho, you know, just having a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of fun here. See, again, this is, this is the stuff you don't see in the comics so much anymore. Just a fun little moment like this, a man and his woman, just uh sharing a little laugh, you know, yeah, uh, you know, give me a break, Diane. I'll, I'll, I'll bet half the oceanographers alive dreamt of being pirates when they were kids. Let me guess you were that half, right? Right as rain, me proud beauty. Uh, for the romance of the open seas, you know, so just, you know, again, just, you know, a little, a little fun, a little lightheartedness, and uh, it turns out they were, they're trying to figure out, uh, you know, uh, some stuff for their, uh, their undersea business that they do, you could say, and the, the news kind of gives them an idea on something that they can help them out here. You see the FFA clipped the Avengers' wings, so... 
And then we spring right in on our team, doing some working out. And this is when, uh, you know, Wasp comes in. She tells Cap how, you know, that uh, that the news is is uh, stating that Captain America is getting ready to, to quit the Avengers because of this whole thing with the the government grounding them from being able to fly their Quinjets right out of their uh, right out of their uh, compound in the heart of Manhattan. And you know, it's Cap abandoning a sinking ship. And so you know, he goes, Connor's got it all wrong. I just set up the toll-free number so people who need my help could contact me more easily. How could he think I'd leave the Avengers? You see, and this is all. See, I, and I, hate, I love this. You're going to see this a lot in this issue, and it's something you know I've never talked about on any past ones. But I love stuff like this. The classic little asterisk that gives you the uh, the footnote to tell you where to find find out about what it is they're talking about. You know, this is always something Marvel did. DC did it too, but Marvel did it even more. They were always very good about making sure to reference to you where you can find more information out if, you, if you're interested in what you're seeing. You know, like the hotline he's talking about. You want to find out about that? Check out Captain America 312. I love that. Again, it's a, one of the little touches that they don't do anymore that's so lost in modern comics. But again, looking at the figure work of John B. I mean, look at that pose here of Cap doing his little, you know, acrobatics up there and then the dismount just you know just classic stuff you know it's this this is the kind of stuff that john buscemi was known for you know it, it's it's strange to me too because i heard stories that john buscemi was not really a big fan of superheroes and that like if he would have been allowed to just draw thor and conan for his entire career he'd have been happier than pig and slop just to do that but you know this just shows you the kind of craftsmanship and professionalism that, that, that the creators of this era have that even though he's not a big fan of superheroes, look at how well he does them. You know, he doesn't slack off in the work and just say, yeah, I'll just you know, phone it in because, you know, it doesn't matter. I don't like this stuff anyway. Total professionalism. Again, something very much missing in the modern era. So they're talking about what they're going to do about the FFA issue, you know, the, the, losing their landing permits being rescinded by the government. You know, and then, you know, she, uh, the Wasp talks about some of the other problems they're having. You know, uh, you know, uh, this couldn't have come at a worse time. The National Security Council is restricting our priority clearance. The Beyonder is loose on Earth, and since Star Fox left last issue, we're short in Avengers. So it's like hard times for the Avengers. A lot of stuff has been going on that uh, it's uh, really been uh, weighing down on the team. So they head in here and they meet up with Captain Marvel and the Black Knight, who the Black Knight is trying to develop a tracking system to track the Beyonder. But this is all during Secret Wars 2. This story takes place is right around the Secret Wars 2 uh, miniseries. And as they talk about that, we get one of probably one of the best moments, I think, in the entire issue. You get a real, a real good moment here with Captain Marvel. And you can see her right here. She goes, I've been an Avenger only a short time, but these people aren't just the Black Knight, the Wasp, and Captain America to me anymore. They're Dane and Jan and Steve, but they still only know me as Captain Marvel. Avengers bylaws don't require me to reveal my true identity to them, but we've been through so much. Maybe I should. So you see, I mean, this, 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 look at this. This is a great character development of the Captain, Captain Marvel character. You know, here in just these two panels, you get a real feel for, you know, her, you know, her desire to be more a member of the team, to be more open and inclusive with them. You know, because they've been so with her and, you know, the, the conflict within her and trying to protect herself and maybe her family by not saying anything, but yet wanting to be open with her teammates who, you know, they've been through so much together and, and they've trusted her so deeply. She wants to, to, to share that kind of trust with them. You know, these two panels are more character development for this character than you saw in two full length feature movies that Marvel did, you know, Captain Marvel and the Marvels. You didn't get anywhere near this level of character development of the of the black Captain Marvel character called Photon, I believe, in the uh, in the Captain Marvel films. You know, this this Captain Marvel, you know, more more character development in two panels than two full length movies. That is just incredible to me. That uh, you know, just just how how much denseness that 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 Stern got into so, such a small amount of space, and you know. It, again, it shows you just this is what Roger Stern's stock and trade is. You know, before he was doing the Avengers, he was working on Spider Man, where he did very much the same thing, where like there's all the character interactions that matter so much the, the character interplays, the, the, the you know, teammates and supporting cast, and all these people that make up the world that the heroes inhabit. You know, that all matters. And they, he tries to give spotlight to each of them to help them grow and show them as 
not just, you know, people with powers who bash bad guys. They're, they're more than that. And that's what this scene right here does. It gives you a, a context to understanding who Captain Marvel is, not just as a hero, but as a person. So Jarvis comes in with some mail, and they find out that, you know, people are asking, you know, since, since the Avengers are no longer allowed to fly their Quinjets out of, you know, Manhattan, they need to store them someplace. So they have to relocate them, and so all these offers are pouring in with people saying, you know, other cities saying, hey, bring them over here, we'll, we'll do that for you, and, you know, it's... So they spent here two, say, two days of going through all this. And I, I love this here. Detroit, they got to be kidding. You know, and I love that because that's this this could be, I don't know. Now, I don't know this for sure, but is it possible this is a little needle at D.C.? Because at the same time period in the, in the mid-'80s, they had what was known as the Detroit League, where, where like it had a whole bunch of also-rans. I think Martian Manhunter was the leader of the team at the time. And they all worked out of Detroit. There were like no main listers on the team. So I wonder if this is like sort of like their little knock at DC, you know, because it's in Detroit. I just I just kind of wonder that. It's just, just funny little, a funny little thing I saw when I was reading through this issue that just uh, kind of tickled my funny bone. But you can see they're all sitting here going through all these uh, all these letters, you know, and, and you know, like they, 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 again, this is like the concerns you would have to deal with. You know, I still can't believe that so many mayors want us to set up shop in their hometowns. Having the Avengers around wouldn't exactly lower their insurance rates after all. You know, and then but then Captain Marvel comes in, yes, but I've noticed that most of the offers are from depressed areas where heavy industry is drying up and people are desperate for something, anything, to put their towns back on the map. Some of these letters are so sad. So you see, it's like they, they understand what the weight of what they're doing here is like you know, the choice they make is going to affect the town that they go to. Wherever they move their 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 twin jets to, it's going to affect that town, and they have to think about that. And then also, they also see that these towns have their own reasons. For, it's not it's not just so purely out of the goodness of their heart that they want the Avengers there. There are other reasons that they have, you know, financial reasons, you know, political reasons, and you know, it's it's something that they need to carefully consider. And then of course, uh, then Wasp comes along with a letter, you know. Uh, uh, oh, this is too good to be true, but I think we may have a winner. So what's who's the winner? Well, we're going to find out in a minute. But before we do that, we have to take a side jaunt. And you see there's a, a guy here in prison, you know, just sitting away, coiling away, at, you know, just rotting away in prison. And then someone comes to a wall to free him. And he obviously knows him. They leave and they come back to their hideout. And you can see it was all done with... Uh, with some kind of technology, and it's who are who are these guys? You wonder why? Well, they're known as the Enclave. You know, you rescued me with jury rigged equipment, operating out of a dirty warehouse. Is this what the Enclave has sunk to? You know, and then we get the the backstory on these guys. These are the guys who are they're like scientific researchers who think they're like the greatest ones ever, and so they tried to create a new race of humans which was him and her who would later become Adam Warlock and Kismet. So these are the guys who created them and they 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 are a little they are they are a little uh a little lacking in the morals department, let's say, for, for their goals. They want to create a whole new uh a whole new yes 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 by creating a new race of perfect human beings, beings which would have recognized us as Earth saviors and masters. So these are guys who are using their scientific genius to ingratiate themselves into positions of power. But, of course, as, as with the Adam Warlock situation and whatnot, it didn't work out quite how they hoped. And things turned bad on them pretty quickly. And, again, see, here's more of our footnotes on where to find out about that stuff. And the last time they were seen was an Avengers Annual a couple of years earlier where they were defeated by the Avengers, which is why he was in prison. And these two were uh, had escaped so that they were able to free him. But they're back together again. He goes, he goes, perhaps I should have. Uh, I warned you against those alliances with Maximus, but neither of you would listen. Now you see the results of your foolish escapades. Our resources have been all but exhausted. It took me months to cobble together the transfer grid that made your escape possible. You know, so, and then, so they decide, all right, well, let's just put all, put all, all that aside and because they're together because I have managed through the fugal, fugal use of our remaining funds to make quite a fortuitous breakthrough observe and then we see he's opening a package here and you know uh, a crate and 
you know, as the enclavers gather around the partially open crate, their eyes gleam from the glow within. Now, what is all this? Well, we're going to have to see later because this is just a subplot. But see, this is, again, this is what you loved about Marvel in the 80s. They always knew how to put in good, interesting subplots to get you set up for the next story, even in a quiet, a quiet, more quiet story like this one without a whole lot of like slam bang action. It's still, they still managed to keep things going and keep you interested. So the Avengers head on out to what they see as an uncharted island. And who's waiting for them? Well, hey, it's Stingray and his wife, the New Elves. And so they get there and they're telling them how they think this would be the ideal place for them to have their base. You know, uh, we've been looking, and here, here, here's where we see the reasoning for all this. We've been looking for a new source of funding when we heard about your problems with the FA, FAA. And we figured, why not lease you some of our space? We have plenty. Oh, there's one thing I should mention. Strictly speaking, this isn't an island. You see, it floats. And that's where we see the truth about it here. This is known as Hydro Base. You see, it, it looks like an island on the top, but underneath is a sort of a, a flotilla base. And the island on top is just for show. So this is like a base, like an island that could move anywhere, anywhere in the ocean. You know, it, it's here today, it's gone tomorrow. And he, you know, he explains the story of how, you know, I can't believe to tell you all the trouble. He, you know, that they're, 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 I know this is hard to believe. But it's true. Hydro Base is really a huge ocean-going vessel. It was created by a crazed survivalist who called himself Dr. Hydro. Uh, and then he goes, suffice it to say that eventually things were put right, and I wound up with ownership of this place, thanks to some obscure maritime salvage laws. So like that, that's how we get to this point. And so he's showing them around. You know, they're thinking about, you know, uh, you know, how, how, how that this will work, you know, where they could store their stuff. And just then somebody shows up and it's the Submariner. And so, you know, they, the Avengers know him, of course. He's been around quite a while. But uh, not all are happy to see him as the uh, Wasp gets a little up, uppity about it, you know, thinking he's here for trouble. And he goes, no, I'm just here to, to see the New Wells because they're friends. And, you know, so... Uh, Namor drops off some stuff for them, some food, and he, you know, they, you know, ask if he wants to uh, tag along while, while they give them a tour of the place. And no, I don't think so. I accept, you know, and the wasp apologizes, you know, for being so uppity and he accepts, but, you know, I won't interrupt your business any further. You know, and uh, so that's the Submariner. He's every bit as regal as I'd heard, but I didn't expect him to be so subdued. He seemed to be holding back some terrible sorrow. So what's Namor's problem? Well, we'll we'll get to that here. We learned from uh, Stingray's wife is that he was he abdicated the throne to Atlantis, and his people basically threw him out, saying we no longer want you to be the king. And so now he's a man without a country, basically. And you know this this is the Avengers. You know they're all like kind of shocked at hearing this. So the tour continues, and they see this great you know monitoring system that they have. This is of course the heart of Hydro Base security a completely computerized visual radar and sonar surveillance of the base perimeter above and below the surface. But meanwhile, Hercules is focused on one single image. And we're about to see why that is. So as Namor is here brooding by himself, Hercules shows up. Ho, oh, Prince No More! Yes, you, you son of a sea cow. I hear that your blue-skinned toadies finally threw you out. So, you know, he's, he's just giving him jazz. And, you know, Namor just like this, basically just bug off. You know, I, I don't I don't want to have a fight with you. And he goes, oh, you don't see a reason for that? Well, now I'll give you one. And this is, where, this is where our action gets in. And this is where you really see the power in the work of John Buscema. I mean, the shot right here of Namor getting slung around. You know, just a great lane. Just look at that angle. Look at that, you know, the, 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 the positioning. I mean, you really can believe that Hercules just threw him like, you know, like he would throw a softball. So, of course, you know, Namor isn't going to take any of that. And again, see here again, another great shot right here, right here in the second panel. And again, you know, you can see hallmarks of, of the book, How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way, which John Buscema drew, in fact. The most, the most of that artwork that was shown in there was his, his work in there. And you can see, like, the way he does the posing, you know, when... Kirk is getting cold cocked here and the, the angle he uses for Namor when he comes flying up to swing and, and nail him, you know, 
the shot here of Namor getting hit by Hercules, you know, as 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 the the battle continues and the crumbling rocks as he falls. I mean, just this this whole page is a masterclass of great figure work and great, you know, panel design and layout. I and mean, this is this is the way you do it. Again, this is how you do comics the Marvel way, or at least how they used to do comics the Marvel way. And you get to see the the power and the intensity that uh, Ushima packed into every single panel. You know, and it, and it continues on. You know, just the battle rages. You know, remember this, Hercules, when you lie bruised and broken on the shore. Remember that you brought this on yourself. You know, tis not the son of Zeus who shall be broken. You know, and so he knocks him in the water, which of course, as we all know, that's got to be probably the worst idea you could have. You know, you know, you have have you so soon forgotten? The waters ever renew my the strength of a true submariner. So you see, it's the battle rages, and again, I just I just love this again. This second panel here, that shot right here, of just you know, the, the blows. Just you can feel the power in the blows, the way you know the way that that Ushema approaches, you know, the the physical battle. So Captain Marvel shows up and try to break it up. Hercules isn't having none of it. Neither is Namor. You know, there will be time enough for answers when the battle is won. So they go to go back into it. But then Captain America steps in, and then the other Avengers show up, and it's like basically, hey, let's keep it cool, guys. And, you know, he's, Wasp, I thought you didn't want any trouble. I didn't. It was your friend Hercules who started this. And then somebody figures out, wait a minute. And then Hercules starts to laugh. Why is he laughing? He goes, well, I do not like the doleful look of this submariner. The Namor I had fought in many times past was a mighty man, a soul truly worthy of the gift of battle. I wanted to prove to myself that he he still was worthy. I, and I wanted to prove it to him as well. And Namor's reaction is just totally classic. He just laughs it off because he understands. See, I believe I see the logic in your actions, mad as they were. You know, and that's the whole thing. is that he, he to just break him out of his funk. By giving him a little combat, you know, something, something to to make him see that he is he's still a worthy, honorable, you know, warrior. And so, you know, they 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 uh, end up uh, basically it, it's over after that. They have a little cookout here, a little clam bake. You know, and you can see here, even even now to this point, you know, really, I didn't know you were from New Orleans. So so this is the, the Black Knight and Captain Marvel sharing a little bit of a. Uh, personal stuff together. See, again, she was talking about wanting to let them more in on who she is. And here she's starting to do that. So you can see, again, you see that the character developments of these characters is great stuff. But uh, there's, of course, there has to be some uh, some little bit of final, uh, final emotion here. So what happens is Cap and Namor go off together. And, you know, he's asking, you know, so what do you intend to do with your life now that you're no longer the monarch? of Atlantis, and he goes, you know, he doesn't know, you know, two-thirds of the world is covered in water, that's a lot of territory to roam, he goes, is that it? You're just going to wander? And so, you know, he, he tells him how, you know, he, he'd hate to see him squander his life and waste it, just being, a, you know, a drifter, so he asks him to become an Avenger, and at first Namor is hesitant, and he doesn't even think this is a real offer, and Cap says, no, he's definitely serious, because I remember how you fought our way across occupied Europe in World War II, you put all your might into helping us topple the Nazi menace. We could have beaten Hitler without you, but it would have cost a lot more lives. You know, and so, you know, and, you know, he's, he's honored that Cap remembers that. He goes, but, you know, you, you know, most, most people tend to remember what they want. And he doesn't think that his temperament is one that will work well with surface dwellers. And, you know, and he goes, oh, you mean like sometime years back when you broke up an Eskimo warship service? And, you know, he's, Namor's a little startled that he knows this. How do you know this story? And he relates the story to him. And he tells him, one of the Eskimos told the story to personnel at the U.S. weather station. I got all the, the details a few months later. That's how I know you hurled their ice-covered totem out to sea. But the story doesn't stop there. You see, the object in that block of ice was a man, a man who had accidentally been thrown into a state of suspended animation. As the totem drifted into the warm waters of the Gulf Stream, its icy sheath slowly melted. The body was found and recovered by a special submersible craft manned by the Avengers. 
just minutes before I revive. And that's when he tells him, he goes, yes, you are responsible for me being reawakened. You know, you brought me out of this. He goes, now will you let me put your name in for a member's membership? And, you know, I would be honored. And I just, I just love that. The, 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 the final, final panel, the close up of the hands, you know, two old war horses, you know, sh- you know, once again, fighting alongside one another, you know, the, the, the camaraderie. And that's what I think this issue really boils down to for me is all the great camaraderie found in here, even, even in the fight, you know, between Hercules and, and uh, the Submariner, you know, even there, there's like, there's still like a, almost like a jovialness to the way they do it, the way they're trash talking each other. And, you know, just the way, the way they, they, you know, they're, they're just knocking each other around, but yet nobody really seems to be getting hurt. It, it almost feels like it, it's just, you know, just friends having a good time in a way. And, that's why I think this issue really stuck out to me for is like, this is the kind of thing you don't see so much of, you know? And like I said, that to me, to me, the, one of the best scenes though, of course, is this right here. Like I said, these, these two panels with Captain Marvel, this is the kind of stuff Stern was really great at doing was bringing in that character moment, that, that, that thing where you really come to feel for the characters as people and, you know, not as just, you know, superheroes. And this is this is the genius of of Stern to bring in the humanity of the characters to make them so relatable to you. Like you, know, you can understand why she feels the way she does here. She wants she has stuff she wants to protect her identity, her family, things like that. But yet she also wants to trust these people the way they have trusted her. And that's something that you again you don't really see this kind of stuff in the books anymore. You don't see these this kind of character development and growth. You know where you saw at the end she was talking with with the black knight and telling him some of her personal stuff. Now, Hey, I'm from new Orleans and you know, he didn't know that before. So you know, the, 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 the growth of the characters in this, you know, and you know, everyone is true to form again, just like with uh, my, one of my favorite Mandar- uh, writers, Bill Mantlo, Stern gets everyone's voice. Correct. Cap, Cap sounds like Cap. Namor sounds like Namor. Hercules sounds like Hercules, you know? And so when you have such a big ensemble cast as this, that can be kind of difficult, but Stern makes it look easy. Because he keeps it, you know, about the characters themselves, not not about anything he wants to specifically say himself. Not even so much about the whole problems they're dealing with with you know the FFA and all that stuff. It's it's about the characters, and this this is this is a great issue that spotlights how to how to really handle an ensemble cast in in a very you know respectful way. And so yeah, definitely Avengers two sixty two. You know, again, it's it's not going to be an expensive. You can probably get a nice, very nice copy of this for like five bucks, maybe even less. Very, very economical. Very, very much a good, a, a good fun read. And like I said, just beautiful work by uh, the great John Buscema. Big John, you know, he, you know, he, he was the man for a reason. You know, his run on Avengers is, is one of the heralded runs of the uh, of the entire book. And you know, an issue like this shows you why. You know, the great figure work, the great action shots, the great, you know, the great, you know. Uh, dynamic close-ups, all that stuff, you know, his camera angles that he would choose to, to lay out the page, just beautiful, beautiful stuff. And, you know, you really can't go wrong. You know, it, Avengers, you know, I guess if you, if you like the movies, you know, at least up until Endgame, if you like all that Avengers stuff, you will definitely really get a lot of fun out of an issue of Avengers like this. And so I can't really recommend it highly enough to folks who, uh, if you're a fan of the Marvel universe, cinematic universe, if you're a fan of, you know, great you know team books this one uh this one is pretty hard to beat as far as i'm concerned just totally like totally this is exactly the tone you want to go for in a team series uh like the avengers and so there we go avengers 262 another classic from uh times gone by but uh you know like i said it's it's just it shows you uh you know that they really did at the time really understood how to portray the characters and to get across the humanity of them in, in a way that they're not doing so well of today. And, you know, like I said, it just, it just shows me why the past uh, stuff, it really needs to be, uh, you know, looked at closer. And again, I liked the footnotes. You saw all those footnotes in the issue. I love that stuff so that you can, you know, get yourself educated. You know, if you didn't understand what these characters were talking about, if you didn't understand what that moment they were having was all about, Here's the reference point so you can go and find it and read it for yourself. Always a good thing. Again, these, these, are, these are things that always made comics so great to me. You know, it's, you, know, you had things that made it unique. Footnotes like that. 
the letters page. You know, there's so many things about comics that was unique to comics that they seem to have gotten away from in, in the more modern times. And I think it would be better if we went back to some of that. So again, Avengers 262, classic team book, classic action, classic Marvel. So, you know, if you, if you can, go ahead and check that out for yourselves. Like I said, I don't think you'll be sorry. And pretty much all of Roger Stern's run on the Avengers was a, was a really high a high watermark on the book that I think a lot of people should look uh, look into a little more. It's his, his run is much overlooked today. And, uh, you know, again, just a, this is just a single issue out of it, and you can see how great it actually is. So definitely one one you should want to check out. So I thank you for joining me today. I hope you got something out of this. I hope you enjoyed checking out some classic uh, mid-80s action here with the Avengers. And I will be back again with some more stuff soon. I have another uh, What's in the Box coming sooner than later. And like I said, I'm working on, on something kind of big. I'm about to see if it breaks the way I want it to break. But I'm still working on it. Hopefully it will. I think you guys are going to like it for this month. And, uh, you know, uh, from after that, uh, we'll just have to see what comes. But I thank you all for joining me today. And I will be back again with more stuff very soon. And until next time. Take care.